let's begin a'udhu billahi minash shaitanir rajeem bismillahir rahmanir rahim allahumma salli ala sayidina muhammadin wa ala ali wa sallim rabbi shrah li sadri wa yassir li amri wa hlul 'uqdatam min lisani yafqahu qawli assalamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh my dear brothers and sisters i hope and pray everyone is doing well alhamdulillah thank you so much everyone we are so grateful for each and every one of you for joining us may allah bless you all oman sisters committee welcome all brothers and sisters across the globe to join our event by allah's blessing and mercy alhamdulillah my name is uzma and i'm doing bachelor's in islamic psychology at iou and chairperson of oman sister student committee let's begin today's session with the recitation of glorious quran by brother humaid أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم وسارعوا إلى مغفرة من ربكم وجنة عرضها السماوات والأرض عدت للمتقين الذين ينفقون في السراء والضراء والكاظمين الغيظ والعافين والعافين عن الناس والله يحب المحسنين والذين إذا فعلوا فاحشة أو ظلموا أنفسهم ذكروا الله ذكروا الله فاستغفروا لذنوبهم ومن يغفر الذنوب إلا الله ولم يصروا على ما فعلوا وهم يعلمون أولئك جزاؤهم مغفرة من ربهم وجنات تجري من تحتها الأنهار خالدين فيها خالدين فيها ونعم أجر العاملين صدق الله العظيم جزاك الله خير كثيرا brother for the beautiful recitation Dear brothers and sisters alhamdulillah this is our fifth beneficial event of semester fall 2023 and we have many other informative webinars on the way inshallah so keep an eye and stay tuned with us you will get all the latest updates from our iou man events groups don't forget to join iou man event community group stay with us till the end we will share exclusively our upcoming webinars details inshallah Dear brothers and sisters if you are searching for the truth everywhere and still don't feel satisfied then you are here at the right place to find that encouragement passion determination to keep moving forward in life like a productive muslim i hope and pray today's webinar will be helpful to everyone to awakening the truth love gratitude compassion within that helps in increasing and boost your our iman inshallah Without further ado, let me introduce to our respectable guest speaker, Sister Shahina Zuhair. Sister Shahina Zuhair is an insightful professional with a pedagogic experience of 25 years, mashallah tabarakallah. She holds masters in English and economics and is a regular participant and presenter in national and international conferences. She is mother of four and an active volunteer at Islamic Information Center Muscat. Sister Shahina has done several motivational workshops of management and certified discover yourself trainer. In addition, she has delivered many talks in English and Urdu languages in many countries. She is also an international leader of effective Islamic English cross-cultural communication. Allahu mubarak. We feel extremely honored and privileged to have Sister Shahina Zuhair with us today. Welcome dear sister Shahina Zuhair to Oman Sisters Committee event. Sister Shahina the mic is yours. 
السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم رب اشرح لي صدري ويسر لي أمري رحل الأرض تم اللساني يفقه قولي First of all I would like to thank the sisters team Oman sisters team of IOU who are really doing a great job by bringing good topics, good speakers around the globe. So may Allah bless and uh, once again, thank you very much. And let's start and see how, why, when, where, what is all about reawakening the truth within. Okay, so first of all, everything is ruled by an intention. Without an intention, life goes like a, a vehicle without brakes. So whatever we are doing, there should be an intention for that. And as uh, the prophetic hadith, there's innam al-amal bin niya. So whatever you are doing, it is all judged by your intention. So the purpose of this talk or this webinar is to realize where are we leading our lives to? No matter how much educated we are, what big scholars people are, whatever work in the Dawa field we are doing, but unless and until we declutter ourselves out of all, all those things, those, those are you know just accumulating in our hearts and making us move in a direction which is zigzag, not straight. And again, we ask Allah for like, So the purpose is to declutter first and to cleanse ourselves, to purify ourselves and to get ready to fill the cup, to fill the glass with pure water that would keep us running like day, every day throughout our lifetime. I mean, I mean, I mean. So imagine if you already have a glass full of water and someone say, can you add some more? So it will start overflowing. In the same way, if you have so many things going into your mind, in your heart, and still, if someone wants to pour more into that, you would, okay, you listen to this, 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 what will happen? It will just like overflowing and nothing you will get it. So let's start emptying that glass, what we already have, it's full. So in the process, inshallah, we will be moving through a very natural, this is like a very simple uh, webinar where you are going to see how step-by-step step we are going to cleanse ourselves and what is holding so many things in ourselves. So without uh, taking more time, let's start decluttering. So, self-deception. Now, so many diseases are there, different type, physical. But this, this self-deception is a disease that is within you, but you cannot see, or rather we cannot see. Now, because we assume ourselves to be free, but actually we are in a box, where we are deaf, dumb, and blind. Now, who are we deceiving? We are deceiving ourselves. And where does the problem lie? Now, the problem is that in the process, we create our own problems without any you know, reason, without any rhyme or reason, we create our own problems unknowingly. For example, if something happens, you make another story because of that something, exaggerate it, and then you do not know that you are creating your own problems, and that is the major problem. So all problems, problems, problems. How? We have something in our mind, 
But when it, we see that thing happening practically, we add something else. No, this is happening because of that. No, 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 because of that. Someone must have done that. That is why this is happening. So you keep on building your ideas, baseless ideas, I should say. And in the process, what happens? If even someone tried to help you, so what do you do? You resist people who try to help you. Stop creating those issues. So you say, no, 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 no. He or she is not my well-wisher. What I think is right. So I'm right. My, my way is the highway. No one else know what I know. So you start judging things unknowingly. And every each moment, of course, there is a Karin who is always misguiding you and telling you to go to the other way, not to the way where we all should move. So here again, let us overcome this self-deception and see how can we move ahead, inshallah. Okay, this dunya or this world is a playground. Now, what happens in a playground? Like in a football match or a cricket match or any other match, what happens? There are people sitting there in the stands, spectators, and there are players. So now I am not there in the playground, but what am I doing there sitting in the uh, sitting uh, there in the spectators and just judging there. Judging people, you are not in that situation. You're not in the playground, but you're just sitting and judging because you don't care. And the moment you don't care, you're a denier. The moment we deny, we are focusing on our, just on ourselves. And then we are unknowingly in a box. And when you are in a box, what happens? You start treating people as objects. Are they objects? No, they are living human beings. We should be equal, even if you're a boss, even if you're the head of the family. You are in a box and you're trying to treat everyone as, a, as an object that, okay, I'm right, he's wrong. I'm right, she's wrong. My way is the highway. So what happens in the process, you say right and wrong. You don't know. You don't know the situation. You don't know what is the player uh, undergoing that moment. Is he has, I mean, he has to pass the ball to someone because of a reason or there is his own uh, mental uh, reason or uh, the situation or the circumstances that is making him play in that manner. So that playground can be like our life. So now you are the boss, you are the elder, and you are putting everyone in an object, as an object, okay? You're blaming, oh, you did this, I did this because of him. You know, the blame game thing is going on. And then it doesn't stop here. You start self-justifying. That you give, give so many reasons I did this because of this. He did this because of this. So you keep on justifying yourself so that your uh, word would be the last word and whatever you say is right. You just want to force. And then in that uh, process, you start comparing people, giving opinions, passing on judgments and giving reasons, making stories and meanings, uh, interpreting things expectations, you expect so many things from people. And sometimes the expectations are just uh, in imagination. I expect my daughter to do, to do this, but I never told her to do it. So how would she know that what do you want her to do? Or I expect my son or I expect my um, employee, whoever is with you. Simple thing from the family to, to the outer world. So in the process, you become like resistance and then ungrateful and sometimes, of course, a liar and self-centered. So it's all me, me, me. And that's all. So uh, let, later on, I'll narrate a story where there was an 
or not later on, let me do it right away. There was an old man living in a small uh, city or a village, I should say, and he had a beautiful white horse. Now see how the game people play and what actually it is. So the, the head of that village wanted to buy his horse. So he asked, he gave a very good, I mean, he offered a very good amount. Please, can you sell it for this much? But he said, no, no. The villagers came and see and told him that, see, you're a poor old man. Why don't you sell your horse? So he said, see, the only thing that this is my horse, white horse, why am I not selling? Don't bring out any reasons or, I mean, no, no interpretations. This is my horse. This is my horse. I'm not selling. I'm not selling. One fine day, the horse went away into a jungle and disappeared. Again, the people came, the neighbors said, oh my God, you lost your horse. See, if you could have sold it and would have earned a lot of money. So the old man again said the same thing. See, the only thing is I lost my horse. Why are you making so many opinions and judgments and giving your own reasons and making meanings out of your own words? Then after a few days, the horse returned with another three, four or four horses, white horses with that. So again, the people came, oh, you're so lucky. See, good, you didn't, uh, you know, you were not upset. And so the, again, the old man said, okay, this is the reality that the horse has returned back. So just let us be to the point that, okay, it came back with another four or five horses. So this old man just had one son. And then uh, it, the, this son started training the horses and was so happy. And one fine day, what happened? He fell down and broke his both, both legs. Again, the people started coming. And oh my God, see, you could have, uh, how sad your son. So the old man said, come on. He fell down. He broke his legs. That's it. Why are you coming again and making your own stories, please? That's it. After that, this small village was like this, uh, a few villages. The head was the ruler of the, that place. So the neighboring um, place or the country, I should say, they attacked this place thing because he was a very weak ruler. So they thought of capturing his uh, this uh, villages or his uh, like a small not a kingdom but uh, this place so now what he did he recruited all the he pulled by force all the boys all the males from the families that you have to come and fight young boys you have to fight for us so what happened they took everyone except this old uh, man's child or the boy again they came they said see you are so lucky at least your boy is there, your, you can see him, but we know that we will lose our sons. And so what, what the story says is that without any assumptions, without any ungratefulness, without any interpretations, life is just a journey. So we need to walk it, accepting all the challenges we are getting from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and accepting and living a life full of gratefulness and let us see now here see now we can see we are the observers and we are in the box okay now what should be the real game there we were the observers or the spectators now here what we should be we should be the players we should care we should submit and when you submit your focus is on others you're no more selfish. You're out of the box. And then you see, see people as they are, as people. My mother is mother. My sister is sister. My son is my son. My friend is my friend, not, a, not an object. So at this moment, you become non-judgmental. You don't judge things. You start being in present. You don't, you don't keep on swinging between past and future. Because... You, what happened yesterday and what is going to happen next, you lose the beauty of the present moment. So now you understand that the present is the beautiful gift given by Allah and you start living in the present. While you 
start living in the present. You are not judgmental. You are a submitter. You start being grateful and you submit to Allah. You become selfless. Again, you start being responsible, accountable, not blaming anyone, being accountable of whatever happened, being responsible of whatever happened, that yes, I am responsible. And of course, integrity, trustworthiness, being committed and being determined. So in uh, short, this is the game that we should play throughout our lifetimes, whatever we are, whether we are a a student or a teacher or a doctor, engineer, a ruler or whatever, whatever ranks in the world. So at the end of the day, our real game is to be a submitter. Now, what happens is we are always living in two worlds. One is the world of assumption and one is the world of reality. So world of assumption is external world and it is temporary, battle. Whereas world of reality is internal world and that is haq. So we need to decide where are we going to operate from, either from haq or from batil. Once these two things are clear, when we understand these two things, that where are we uh, moving from? Batil or Haq? Immediately, the lens change and we started, or oh, sorry, we start discovering who we are, who is our creator, who is the uh, our enemy, Iblis, who promised that Allah, I will take people, more people to hellfire. Whereas Allah says, whoever believe in me, follows me, obey, obey me, will be going to the paradise. So let us move more into it and see the way of life. So while haq and batil, when we see, so you like my way of life is totally different than Allah's way of life. Now where my way of life comes, it, it is always there with an ego. So this is my way of life is more or less an e uh, egoist way of life. You know, like it, you're, uh, you're moving with ego. You're just don't want to listen to reality. So let us see. Now we have to make choice. Either you want Allah's way of life or you want uh, your way of life. So now Allah's way of life is, of course, Akhira perspective. And my way of life is dunya's perspective, the worldly, you know, world's perspective. So when we talk about Allah's way of life, it is haq. Dunya's way of life is batil. So if you just talk about Allah's way of life, it is haq, reality. Submission, acceptance, realization, non judgmental, beneficial, truth, light, conscious, internal, heart, true beliefs, responsible, accountable, integrity, trustworthy, justice, committed, determined, focus on others, grateful, so forth and so on. So, this is the way of life. If we want ourselves to focus on something, it should be Allah's way of life. Rather, my way of life or the dunya or the world's perspective, that is batil, assumptions, denial, you justify things, you become judgmental, uh, evil, harmful, falsehood, darkness, unconscious, external, occurrence, you know, like uh, corrupt views, false beliefs, blame, complaining, right and wrong. If, but, why, how? These questions keep coming. Uh, why should I do that? Why should I uh, obey that command? Why should I do that? So all those things, you know, they keep keep on popping because there is a Karin who is always there to deviate you from 
Allah's way. And of course, here you focus on yourself, you are ungrateful, and you become like uh, you are going towards the battle. So this is a wake-up call for one and all, first for me and then for everything else, everyone else, sorry, that where are we actually leading towards? Is it this way or that way? So let's see what else is awaiting, inshallah. Hope you all must be really focusing yourself and trying to make use of this beautiful day of Juma and trying to check yourself where do we actually stand. Right. Belief. Allah, the haqq, the truth, gave us the choice to program the internal with his belief system, then respond to the external world and experience life. Now, this is what belief is. So now what happens? We have a choice. So man has a choice and hence programs his internal using his external faculties, the senses, the mind, the mind from knowledge, experiences, evidence, society, parents, and then respond and experience life. So this is what belief is that you, whatever you are doing, wherever you're operating from, you are operating from haq. So the moment you're operating from haq, the truth, what's happening? Your actions are clearly shown. And you yourself know where are you operating from. Right. This thing is, you know, listening. What is listening? Actually, our memory shapes how we see those who seek to instruct us. And how we see those who instruct us determines what we actually hear. Now, we often let our memories distort our understanding of the world and so often do not hear what is told or see or what is shown. Now, listening and you see the la. So listening from la, that is nothingness. Your communication is unbiased, non-reactive, straight, creative, and you will be able to make a difference. See, mind is given to you empty so that you can make it perfectly subservient to your heart. And then, so mind should be trained to be the servant of heart. Don't just think and do it. And now, what is happening? With so many years of education, you just forget the heart and you just operate from using your mind. So actually heart should be the controller, not the mind. Let us see, how does it go? For example, if someone comes to you and, listen and speak to you, you already have your answer or the reply ready, or you already have a background about that person, you're already wearing a different color glasses for that person. So when you wear like a blue glass, things will appear blue, yellow, things will appear yellow. But when you wear a crystal clear, pure, transparent white glass, you will see things without any background. For example, a simple example, if a maid is coming to you and asking you for a day's leave. So, in the background, oh, maybe she's a liar. Oh, she just wants to run away from work. No, listen to her or listen to whoever is talking to you with a la background. La means nothing. So when you listen to a thing with la background, with someone, or when you listen to someone with la background, the whole world change. How? Because when you listen with la, it is. La ilaha illallah. 
Now, when you're listening, so what happened? So your action, your response, actually it is given by the perception you have. And now, when you don't have any perception, you're not thinking about anyone that, oh, she's a cheat or bad, or um, it's like a big mistake I did trusting him or her. And I, you know, she doesn't listen to me. She is uh, so proud, all those things. Forget about them while you're listening to someone without any background. Listen, because Im immediately the action will come, will follow whatever is happening. So listen with la. Start practicing. Whenever anyone is speaking to you, just listen to the conversation, to what he or she is trying to tell you. Just with la. Don't try to keep everything ready. Oh, she's coming now. See, I will, how I will set him right. How will I set her right? I will do this. I will do that. What does she think now? So please, we are here on this planet for a very short time. Each moment we are moving towards our grave. So we ask Allah to guide us each moment and always help us to operate our lives on La ilaha illallah. Amin. See now how much of pain frustration, depression, anger, stress, how much you're just suffering just because of no one, but just because of yourself. You, when you tend to make your own um, belief or when you think that, okay, I'm this, I'm this, I'm this, it start happening. So let us again start coming out of the box, think, because we are responsible to, uh, to spread these things in the society. See what happens for no reasons. If something happens, if it is, if you're listening from La or if you're uh, act, acting on the, uh, from Haq, not from the Batil, so you will overcome all these things. All these things are diseases. And you get them in the process. What happens? Your actions will become terrible. And then now see what happened. When life is going smooth, you do not need any support, help, guidance, or advising, or counseling. When you're down and you're failing, negative conversation starts. And see how negative things come up, how negativity grips you with different depression and frustration. So when you're down, what you say to yourself, what belief comes up? Now you think, I'm thinking, you think. So once your belief is coming from Haq, you will overcome in no time. Once it is coming from Batil, it, you will add more and more. And let's see how. Ya Allah. Now, you're so upset, you're so depressed, you don't know what to do, and you're just in a, like, you judge others and you have false belief about yourself. And see, you cannot help others, you cannot acknowledge others, and now you're just thinking, you're going deeper and deeper. See now, we can read so many things. I'm not pretty, I'm not rich, I'm this, I will never work, so many things. So the more you get into it, the more you're drowning yourself into the sea of depression, sea of sadness, sea of negativity. So let us try to, today, today is the day, this moment is the time when we will try our best to come out of all this by believing in Haq, by just away. We are cancelling from our life the word batil. No. Everything happens with Allah's will. Nothing happens with our own will. So we believe in the six pillars of faith. So one is Qadr. So whatever happens, good or bad, happens with the will of Allah. 
and to accept it by thanking and being grateful. So we are always and we inshallah will always be a win-win situation. Something bad, alhamdulillah, good, alhamdulillah. So a believer is all, always in a win-win situation. The moment you say alhamdulillah, that feeling, you know, you, you're, it totally takes away your negativity and you will enter a positive zone, inshallah. So that is what is between, we are going between or we are uh, like, the moment we find ourselves, no, 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 no. This is from Batil. We have to catch ourselves and to return back. Because this Karin is going to be until the last moment of your life. And try the best to take you towards hell. So we need to keep checking by the moment we drive that side, we tilt that side, we have to check ourselves. No, 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 no. We have to come back and we need to focus on Haq. Right. See, we try to be what, you know, like a meaning-making machine. We make meaning of everything, you know, without any rhyme or reason. Like, you know, we see through interpretation. What meaning you give to what happens creates your experience, being and belief. So who you are being when something happens? You understand? When something happens, being changes and that being creates beliefs. And that belief makes the decision. So you have no control over the circumstances, situation and people around you. But you have the power to control your response to any circumstance or situation. So change the meaning, your life changes. So never be a meaning-making meaning machine. For everything, you say, oh, no, no, this happened because of this and this happened because of that. So try not to uh, let evil interfere your life. Take the life as a journey and each moment accept it as a challenge and live it using the which way of life? Allah's way of life. And yes, the soul is uh, like, it has to be conquered from the clutches of evil force. And it should be connected to the to Allah's way of life, to the qalb. And so let us not let uh, shaitan control our lives. Yeah, see now, I'm just uh, giving you certain examples that when you play blame game you're indirectly killing someone's uh, you know the capabilities you're just throwing that person out you can see each one is giving making blame blame or playing blame game so finally the last one who doesn't have anything else would be the one who is suffering without any rhyme or reason so this is, again, very important to check and never play a blame game. So we will be more towards integrity than towards falsehood. Yeah. Responsibility versus blame game. So when you're playing blame game, what happens? You are running away from the responsibility. Once, for example, a very, like a, I, I'm in a tiny example. The son said to his mother that, mom, I'll take you to the hospital at 10 a.m. Please be ready and wait for me. Now, who is responsible? The son is responsible. He is coming at 11, 11.30, telling his mother, oh, because of the traffic, because of my boss, because of this, because of that. So what happens? Again, so many stories will come up. In the process, sometimes you have to, sometimes people say lies and just to clear their, their ego, but rather it is the other way around to clarify the situation. The moment you take responsibility, I am sorry, I take the responsibility of being late or I take responsibility of doing this task 
uh, I mean, uh, I delayed this task. So it's my responsibility. Never throw your responsibilities on others' shoulders. This will make you living which way of life? Allah's way of life. That this will connect you towards her. This will take you away from Batil. So let us begin, let us uh, begin to be more responsible from this mom moment, moment uh, onwards. And another thing. Who is responsible? Who will I hold responsible when I will be in front of my Lord? No blame games. Everything will speak except your tongue. So where is that blame game? So to be, to be more cautious, please stop playing blame game and start being responsible right from now. What happens when there is a success to the story? Oh, I did it, I did it. When there is a, it, it's like devastating or something went really wrong. Oh, he did it, she did it because of that, because of her plan. She's always like that, he's always like that. See now, the blame game is coming into, uh, is jumping in. So be responsible and see how the world of success will open inshallah. Again, submission versus denial. The moment you deny, denial is dangerous. La, you're not, you're denying for something that no, no, no. I don't believe in it. I don't uh, take my responsibility. I don't agree. I'm like, but now you, when you're denying, you deny ha. When you deny, you, you're going into batil. So the moment you submit yourself, who are you are submitting? So the moment you submit to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, hands up, Ya Allah, I submit to you. And the moment you submit to Allah, the peace comes and you will be away from deny. The moment you deny from truth, your submission is a big question mark. So submission and denial, blaming versus accepting or being responsible. These things are really very important for each one of us to run a successful life. So next, let us see what is awaiting us. I hope we are enjoying and learning something out of it. Inshallah, may Allah guide us all to, to be on the way of Haq and to be away from Batil. Ameen, Ya Rabbil Alameen. So it is integrity. What is integrity? What comes to our mind when we talk about integrity? Integrity is when so many things, if you look at the dictionary, 100 things will come for integrity, honesty and uh, like uh, determination, perseverance, so many things. But honor your word. Honoring your word will take away, I think, 99.9 .9 problems from your life. Allah says in the Quran, A'udhu billahi mina shaitani rajeem, ya ayyuhallazina amanu, lima taquluna ma la taf'aloon. Oh, you believe, why do you say what you don't do it? I mean, why don't you keep your word? This is not me. This is not you. This is Almighty, Allah, His command to honor your word. Where are we going these days? Where are we going? Are we honoring our words? No, most of the time, no. Sometimes, okay. But most of the time we are running from the situation. We are not honoring our word. We say something, we do something else. We, we are not only creating a horrible atmosphere around us, because when we say something, we don't do it. What do you think our generations will do? Will they do what? Like, they will just look at us. Oh, my mom. She says, I'll bring this today from even a small thing from supermarket. And then she says, oh, I forgot. No, it's your duty to remember. You honor your word. You promised your mom something. You have to come at that time. Stop playing blame game. You, on, you honor your word. You promise Allah to that I will memorize the Quran. I'm sorry. So many of us, we promise, but we don't honor our word. Oh, I can't because, because I'm physically capable, but mentally I'm just running away from that. I'm running away from that ground. I'm just sitting in the spectator's 
a tent and saying, no, it's so difficult. How can I, how can he do, do that? I can't. So you promise something today. Let us all promise that from today, Allah, whatever we say, whatever we promise you, whatever we promise others, whatever we tell others, we need to honor our words. Because without this, life is, again, I will say, without integrity, life is just going to be a vehicle without brakes. You don't know where you are uh, going to land or where you are going to drive into. Inshallah, may Allah guide us all. Okay. Now, see, when we are talking about blame game and all those things, uh, the story of uh, Hajar alayhi salam, see, uh, brothers and sisters, <clears throat> So many of us, we keep ourselves as victims. Oh, this happened to us. Oh, this happened to us. Now you're repeating the same story again and again and trying to gain uh, the people, you know, that, okay, they will feel sorry and, uh, oh my God. But, you know, once, once, twice, third time, they will run away from you. My God, every time she's crying for something, every time she's narrating an old incident and again, she's talking about that. Now look at how... How determined, how much of perseverance Hajar had that when Prophet Ibrahim, peace be upon him, left her into the barren land of Makkah, she with her son, she just asked, is that what Allah commanded you? He said, yes. So she didn't even say and he left and she was alone with a child. Who was with her? Allah was with her and Allah is with us, all of us. She discovered that. That, okay, now Allah's command, Allah will help. Until now, people are running seven times a fine marwa in the honor of Hajar alayhi salam. So please never victimize yourself. I can't do it. This happened to me. No, there is always an opening. There is always in the malus reyusra. There is always an ease. There is always a good tidings. So that is a part that Allah is testing you. So let us take, let us look at our role models. Let us read about them. Let us learn out from them that how they led their lives how with 100% submission to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And again, there is a reminder. The Prophet wasalam, said, if you guarantee me six things on your part, I shall guarantee you paradise. So let us connect one after the other, the topics and the discussion we are having that we need to of course, paradise, that too has, like this uh, is given, this good news is given by Prophet. Speak the truth when you talk. Keep a promise when you make it. And when you are trusted with something, fulfill your trust. Avoid sexual immorality. Lower your gaze, of course, in modesty. Refrain your hands from injustice. So let these reminders be the operating a way of our lives. Let us operate on these reminders. Let us submit ourselves to Allah. Let us discover that we need to be at all times uh, we should be following Allah's way of life and let us talk about paradigm shift. Now paradigm shift is like shifting the limits. Sometimes like uh, it is firstly like ability to identify the paradigm from which we are thinking. That trap or limit you in your life that you may not even realize. Secondly, it gives you access to invent new paradigm for yourself that give you far broader range of possibilities. And here, Islam being a lifestyle and value system in every aspect of life, needs a paradigm for our daily living. The present society and civilization has a definite, precise, and explicit paradigm to work for material success in the world. This paradigm very clearly depicts the end of life in this world. And hence, unaccountability of one's deeds after this life. So even in this life, if one manages to deceive others by being smart, one is termed successful. Saffarallah a Muslim cannot live as a true Muslim under the present paradigm. So what we need to do, we need to change our paradigm and we need to navigate like a Muslim and you live under that paradigm to the place where you belong to. 
So the only way for Muslims to live Islamically is to formulate an effective and precise Islamic paradigm based on the totality of life in this world and the hereafter. Of course, with total surrender to Allah. And how do we shift this paradigm? Okay, this is a picture. Uh, anyways, it shows, uh, this is again a paradigm shift because here some of you will see a picture of a young girl while others can see a picture of an old woman. So it is sometimes we are talking about paradigm shift, even situations, circumstances, each one is looking from their paradigm and everyone is right from their point of view. So here, what does paradigm shift means to us is, it should be from internal to external. Like whatever we are believing in, it should be shown in the actions. I'll just quickly narrate a short story. Once in a train, people were traveling in first class and AC and they were busy reading. Suddenly the train stopped and entered a man with three kids and the kids were so naughty. They made the, I mean, they disturbed everyone jumping here and there. So people stared, they asked, I mean, then after some time when they couldn't tolerate, one said, please, you just uh, let your kids sit down or to be peaceful and not to disturb us a lot. So this man said that they, these kids uh, are coming, they are coming from, the. Uh, I mean, we just attended the funeral of their mother and we are going back to a town. And with this one word, with Santin, the everything changed. What happened? They started uh, talking to them nicely and giving them some food to eat. So this is how paradigm shifted. So this is the shift that each one of us need, whatever we are doing. Paradigm shift is a powerful chain. The moment we change, we have a new way of life. We have new ideas. We have positive ideas. And we think from a different perspective of life, not from the regular one. Because no right and wrong, only ways of viewing reality. Life is, of course, beyond opinions. We need to check reality at all times that where are we operating from. And you cannot empower anyone when you make others wrong. So don't keep on, you are wrong, you are wrong, you are wrong. Come on, look, look at their uh, this thing, intentions, talk to them, be kind to them. Have that paradigm shift for everyone. Remove those yellow glasses and see how life will uh, take you towards a beautiful end and of course, a lovely akhira. So to change the situation, we need to change ourselves. Every time, same thing won't work. We need to change. We need to find out where are, where are we lacking? What, uh, what skill are, do we lack? So we need to fix it and move ahead. And of course, change ourselves and change our perceptions. So a complete change in thinking that allows the creation of a new condition previously thought impossible or unacceptable. We say, oh, how can we do it? So difficult. Oh, hijab, how difficult it is. How can we do it? Oh my God, what will people think about me? And so many other things, interest, so many things that uh, you can see in the society. But you need, don't need to rush on the people's way of life. You need to have your way of life that is directed by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So this is, of course, a paradigm shift. And if you always do what you always did, you will always get what you always got. Make a change and the time is now. Now, let us see how we will change our lives from today. How we will change our movements from today. Movement, move towards haq. Get away from batil. And of course, you will be finding you being tested like very often. Now a test, now a test, here a test, there a test, 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 test. So we need to overcome these tests, of course, by holding the rope tightly to the rope of Allah. And inshallah, we will be ending up in the eternal paradise. Amin. So now, what if there is only one arrow that is thinking differently? There are, oh, this is the way. We will not pray for it. It's fine. 
we can get up any time and we can pray. What qiyamul layl? It's so difficult. The moment you come out of your, com of your comfort zone, the moment you make yourself distinct, different by operating on Allah's way of life, you will be a shining star living in this dunya, making people's life uh, good, being a role model for them. Of course, our role model is Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. But being like a unique person. So in this process, you will motivate many more around to be unique, inshallah, and to operate on Allah's way of life. And of course, this is what real hijrah is. We talk about hijrah. What is hijrah? But what is actually hijrah? Migration of heart to Allah and his messenger. So, of course, hijrah has another meaning also. But right now, everyone, we cannot just, oh, I'm going, I'm making hijrah, I'm going there now. No. So many reasons, so many geographical conditions, so many things are there. So now, hijrah is migration of heart to Allah and his messenger. So what if we are like uh, giving up? So giving up is actually hijrah. So what actually are we going to do now? We need to do hijrah. We need to give up gossip in our heads, hatred, envy, pride, arrogance, selfishness, finding faults or finding mistakes in others, detaching, anger, you're right, others are wrong. Resentment. Oh my God, resentment. For no reason, people start hating others. May Allah forbid. May Allah protect us from all these things and criticism. So if you just, this list goes on and on and on. But if you just focus on these few things, inshallah, of course, with Allah's will, we will be again reunited in the beautiful, eternal uh, paradise. Al-Firdaus ala Ya Rabbi Tabila with Prophet. Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Ameen. So the choice is very clear. The choice is yours. What you want to do and how you want to make your life. So Allah tells us in the Quran that every human being accepts the faith or denies it according to his own will. He instructs his messenger to say to people, this is the truth from your Lord. He who wants to believe may do so, and he who wants to disbelieve may do so. This is uh, chapter 18, verse 29. This verse tell us, tells us that man chooses for himself whether to believe in Allah or not. This is most important choice a man ever makes. And of course, Allah also tells us that no action will be allowed to pass unnoticed. So as you see here, uh, again here so this is the other way so whoever does an action weight of good will see it then and whoever does an action weight of evil will see so this this is these are the two verses it starts from the first one so please be careful, be aware of that day, that scale on the day of judgment, where whatever you good you're doing, small or big, Allah will not forget and everything you will find there registered. So may Allah help us and may Allah guide us and may Allah protect us and may Allah forgive us for all our sins. Amin, Ya Rab. So now it's your choice to be out of the box or you want to be in the, inside the box. The moment you jump out of the box, you will see people as human beings. You will not see them as objects. So until now, until today, we... Like I see others straightforwardly as they are, without bias as people who have needs, desires. Okay, when others are being seen and treated straightforwardly, in turn, they re respond back accordingly. So being in box, I deceive myself. So I'm no more deceptive. Now my view about others are not 
distorted and I see others clearly now. So we, I'm not in the box and I'm aware and I'm not blind. I can see things very clear. I am going to inshallah walk the straight path. Of course, checking myself from time to time. And the moment we uh, check ourselves and we come out of the box, we do so many things. Number one is forgiveness. Forgiveness is so important that once when Prophet Wasallam was talking to his uh, or uh, with his uh, companions, he said a man will come who is uh, who will go to paradise, like he already said about him. So one man for, came and he said, so like thrice I think this happened. So one of the companions went and stayed with this man and asked and uh, said, what special do you do? That he saw him just normally praying and like worshipping, whatever. But she said, what do you do that Allah has, uh, that uh, Allah's Rasul said that you are going to paradise? So he said, I just forgive people before I sleep. So how many of us do forgive people? Do we? Are we ready to forgive? Please forgive people. Because forgive forgiveness can be so beneficial that you will feel how you get free. Forgiveness is completing the past and <clears throat> it is to have a powerful life. And you know, once you have powerful life, once you want to have powerful life, just forgive. Let go. Let people be free. Because if you don't forgive, your life will be locked and you will be in a prison. So can we try? Can we try this moment to forgive people? So as we are moving towards the end of this webinar, let us listen to something very beautiful. And while listening, just focused on it and try to focus and then try to forgive as many people come to your mind. And whatever they did, they never did it. Whatever they like, uh, they did it uh, with a purpose or uh, unknowingly, but we need to forgive them. So please listen to this uh, lovely, lovely voice. Inshallah. I'm just playing it. Okay. Here it goes. Christians presents Spiritual High by Hassan Rasul. A A Ashad. 
لا اله الا الله Alhamdulillah, we heard a beautiful adhan, which really makes us think that, where are we going to? Why can't we forget people? Just forget, not forget, sorry, forgive people. Forgiveness can release so many things. We will be, now look at this, uh, like it's like a jihad when we are carrying so much of load and walking. So is it worth carrying that person? The moment you say no, it's gone. So yes, some wounds are deep, but start now and slowly over time, you shall heal. And of course, trust Allah and seek his help as nothing is possible without his help. So with this, inshallah, we will be, uh, we are almost done with uh, the talk, with the webinar. So I'll just uh, play a short clipping to remind ourselves and to keep ourselves connected to Allah at all moments. So listen to this, please. And inshallah, then we can continue with the question answer session if you have. So this is the final one. وإذا نلت محبة الله ماذا فقد لم تفقد شيئا وإذا غابت عنك محبة الله ماذا وجدت لم تجد شيئا النتائج والسمار والخصائص والآثار التي تترتب على محبة الله لك لا تعد ولا تعصى منها إذا أحبك الله ألقى محبتك في قلوب الخلق وإذا أحبك الخلق فهذا رأس مال لا يقدر بثمن أن يحبك الناس أن يحبك من حولك إذا أحبك الله منحك الحكمة ومن يؤتى الحكمة فقد أوتي خيرات كثيرة الإنسان إذا أوتي الحكمة يسعد بدخل محدود والذي لن يؤتى الحكمة يشقى بدخل غير محدود الإنسان إذا أوتي الحكمة يسعد بزوج من الدرجة العاشرة 
والذي لا نؤتى الحكمه يشقى بزوج من الدرجه الاولى. الانسان اذا اوتي الحكمه يجعل من العدو صديقا. والذي لم يؤت الحكمه يجعل من الصديق عدوا. يعني عطاء لا يقدر بثمن اذا منحك الله الحكمه. والحكمه تؤتى من الله مكافاه على ايمان المؤمن واستقامته على امر الله وهي من ثمار محبه الله. ان تؤتى الحكمه. اذا اتاك الله الحكمه اعطاك السكينه. السكينة حالة من الرضا من السعادة من التفاؤل من القوة من الثقة بالنفس من سداد الرأي من صحة الرؤية هذه السكينة تسعد بها ولو فقدت كل شيء وتشقى بفقدها ولو ملكت كل شيء والإنسان قد يؤتى مالا وفيرا وصحة وقوة وذكاء ولا يؤتى الحكمة فهو أشقى الأشقياء لذلك قيل إن الله يعطي الصحة والذكاء والمال والجمال للكثيرين من خلقه ولكنه يعطي السكينة بقدر في أصفيائه المؤمنين So with this clipping جزاكم الله خير واخر دعوانا عن الحمد لله رب العالمين Thank you so much Ustada Shahina for giving us your precious time and very energetic session Jazakallah khairan kaseeran for enlightening us with blessed information your beautiful advices and beautiful informative video clip Now we are moving towards our next uh, section of question and answers inshallah So our <coughs> sorry Our first question for you is how to deal with people that are close family members but live their lives as my my way of life even when we try to advise them as assalamu alaikum this is a really uh, i should say a good question and this question we should ask ourselves that how can we handle the situation at certain times we feel that uh, someone is trying to dominate you uh, to uh, want you to just follow them so of course as the last clipping we see we saw that there is wisdom so you just we can't change people so we need to accept people as they are but in the process we need to change our behavior in a positive way that would make that person realize their themselves you know that what they are doing is right or wrong but in certain cases you can just sit and very nicely talk to them things might change but basically of course we need to discover our potential and we need to discover ourselves that how can we overcome this situation and believe me allah will give you thoughts and you will do the actions loved by allah and inshallah in the process you will change the uh, the climate i should say of the house the atmosphere of the house and things will be better and of course nothing is more strong than dua duas can turn things so differently that we can't even imagine so never underestimate underestimate the power of dua of course with your actions and allah's help everything is possible thank you jazakallah khair Amin wa yaki. So our next question is how to deal with people who always blame others for their own mistakes. See, this is the way of life. The way of the world is going. Like you know, like they, you just, you are now. You did this webinar. You attended this webinar. You will have ideas how to deal with such people if they are playing blame game. you start being responsible and you start taking your own responsibilities that okay i am responsible for it the moment things it will take long time this is not like one minute everything will change it will take the process will take time but at the end of the day inshallah haq is always successful and you will win the situation by your own patience and your own uh, like the procedure how you act how you talk 
you ne you're never getting upset with them you're not not like uh, reacting to the situation see this is a very important point here please don't react the moment you, you react to a situation it turns upside down so if you stop reacting to that situation when people are blaming and think you just stop uh, reacting and then you see how things will change just listen quietly okay fine so they will realize by Allah's will that how things should be, inshallah. And now you can discuss this workshop or the work webinar with others. I hope uh, this is clear. Zakallah khair. Ameen, Wayaki. Yes, this is clear, mashallah. Best advice. So our next question is, what is the best advice to empty our cup from negativity? The best advice, the best advice is la. La ilaha illallah. Just operate your life with la. There is nothingness, no yellow glasses, no blame game, no uh, denials. So this is how you start emptying your cup. And once it is empty, you like, I think some of is, or little of your cup is uh, being empty today. Then start refilling it slowly and steadily with things that you want in your life, with the, uh, strategies that we learned today so so many things you start accepting people as they are stop playing blame game uh, stop being reactive so all these things will slowly empty your cup and it would be filled with positivity of course by allah's will hope i've answered the question alhamdulillah yes we are moving towards our last question of the day and it is how to remove the filter with people, especially when we have trust issues due to the past experiences? Uh, can you repeat that question, please? Yes. How to remove the filter with people, especially when we have trust issues due to past experiences? Uh, I think um, the question means that if you someone has uh, ditched you in the past, you cannot have the trust in that person. Is it? Do I understand it correctly? Yes, the questioner means that if they wear certain kind of glasses, so how they remove these glasses from themselves and uh, change their thinking about others people when they have that trust issue problems due to the past experiences. So how they move forward in their life and remove those glasses from them. Okay, so how to remove those glasses? See, past experiences, one thing. Present is another thing. Future, what will, whatever will happen, Allah knows the best. Now in present, when someone is coming who you already had bad experiences with, of course, you will remember that even if you forgive, but that would be one of your, in your background. That, okay, he did this to me. But practice makes man perfect. So the more you practice listening to someone with law background without having things okay now you only practice will make you everyone we are human beings we think that way but we need to practice and sometimes you will have you will be in such a win-win situation that so many things those glasses those things will break that shatters and you will feel oh this is the story actually and then you will be uh, discovering the truth that this is not that this is actually the situation so this is all what you practice while listening to people, while talking to people. So when you are coming from a law background, when you're operating from Haq, you're away from Batil, inshallah, you will, Allah will help you to, to act accordingly at a particular moment or a, uh, situation. I hope that is clear. Jazakallah. Alhamdulillah. Thank you so much once again for enlightening us with the blessed information, beautiful advices and suggestions. Thanks a lot for clarifying the doubts and answering the question. Jazakallah khair and kaseer and sister Shahina. May Allah preserve you and bless you immensely. Ameen. Barakallah fikum. Thank you so much. Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum as -salam. Dear brothers and sisters, I pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us from those who hear the advice and put it into action. Ameen. From here. I hand over my mic to dear Sister Shifa. I would like to thank Sister Shifa for providing us important information regarding IOU. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu. I hope that all of you have taken abundant lessons from today's session. 
Now a little bit about IOU. IOU stands for International Open University. And let me tell you more about IOU. IOU's mission is to provide authentic Islamic knowledge, which is accessible, affordable, forming communities run by Islamic ethics, giving quality and application. Here is a short video that will tell you more about IOU. Are you struggling with commitments and responsibilities? Are your goals halted for lack of opportunities? Don't worry, we can give you a helping hand. We are the International Open University, IOU. For over a decade, IOU has established itself as a leading online Islamic university. We offer a range of programs from a wide number of disciplines, like psychology, education, business administration, and Arabic language at various degree levels including certificates, bachelors, and masters. Our university is accredited in the Gambia and offers affordable fees to you, irrespective of where you live. IOU has been proud to teach students from all over the world and be led by its founder, Dr. Bilal Phillips. With us, you can experience diversity through shared faith and strong alumni support. IOU's blended learning incorporates Islamized education through all its mainstream curricula. IOU ensures adequate preparation for your dream career to gain authentic knowledge of Islam and help you towards self-enhancement. Your wait is finally over. Just take the first step to get in touch with us. Let us guide you to continue your amazing journey of knowledge and excellence with the International Open University. Register today for our spring or fall semesters and enjoy a 10% discount when you enroll early. Learn more at our website. So Alhamdulillah, I hope that you got an idea about what IOU is and what are the courses that are offered here. So apart from what is mentioned, we also have a Global Quran Memorization Center, which offers Quran Memorization, Ijazah programs, Tajweed, as well as Khatma at a very affordable fee. We also have General Diploma in Islamic Studies, which has over 40 courses at just a small subscription fee of $1 per month. Apart from this, there is also Ilm Institute, which has short courses. So for further details and assistance, inshallah, you can send an email to helpdesk at iou.edu.gm. Regarding general inquiry and admissions, you can send an email to info at iou.edu.gm. If you'd like to share your feedback or send suggestions, you can send an email to oman.sr.sc at iou.edu.gm. Inshallah, for this fall semester 2023, we have three more upcoming events. One, which is on the 16th of September at 3 p.m. UTC, which is 7 p.m. Oman time, on the topic, Unlock Your Superpowers by speaker brother Stephen Stelges. We also have an event on Sunday, the 17th of September at 4 p.m. Oman time, which is 12 p.m. UTC by Speaker Her Highness Maya Al Said on the topic The Muslims We Are, The Muslims We Should Be. We also have a special sisters only event, which is which has a mandatory registration on the topic The Divine Promise Guidance from Suratul Ankabut on Dealing with Struggles by Ustada Nayara Salah. It will be held tomorrow, inshallah, Saturday, 16 September 2023 at 4 p.m. Oman time. With this, we have come towards the end of today's session. And I would like to take this opportunity to appreciate and thank everyone that is involved in today's session. First and foremost, Alhamdulillah, all praise and thanks is due to Allah alone. This session has been possible only by His mercy and help. I'd like to show immense gratitude and appreciation to our amazing guest speaker, Sister Shahina Zuhair, for a beautiful and inspiring session that changed our mindset to understand not to overfill our COVID negativity, but rather to empty it and fill it up again with positivity. It was an eye-opening session to recognize our nafs, our own self, and how to deal with things taking place in our life, whether it is influenced by others or by our, or by our own self. 
Jazakallahu khairan for your precious time and efforts. I'm greatly thankful to IOU for this amazing platform where we can learn and share the vast knowledge of Islam. I'd also like to thank our student committee officers, Sister Maria and Sister Noor for their help and support throughout our programs. I thank my fellow Oman Sister Student Committee members, Sister Uzma and Sister Tehreem, for their selfless efforts and immense hard work in planning and organizing our sessions. Jazakumullahu khairan. Last but never the least, I'm grateful to each and every one of you who have joined with us, without whom our event wouldn't even have been possible. So Jazakumullahu khairan for your fruitful and active participation. I hope that you were able to take abundant lessons and learn something new from today's session. I pray to Allah to accept all our efforts in gaining knowledge. May Allah accept from us and give us a tawfiq to become better Muslims with increased iman. Jazakumullahu khairan. We will end here with the dua. Subhanakallahumma wa bihamdik. Ashhadu an la ilaha illa anta. Astaghfiruka wa atubu ilayk. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu.